Many decades ago, early astronomers and a lot of science communicators used to think of Earth as just some average planet around an average star in a somewhat average location around the galaxy, suggesting that many such planets should exist out there, suggesting that many such planets should have habitable conditions, with many potentially hosting different types of extraterrestrial life, even some kind of extraterrestrial intelligence. In the last couple of decades, we kind of discovered almost the opposite. Only is Earth seems to be extremely different from a lot of other exoplanets. So is our Sun, so is the place where we are in the galaxy. This blue ball right here might actually be extremely rare. And on that blue ball, we have seen life pretty adaptable in many different situations, environments, and taking advantage of energy sources, taking nuclear from thermal to even radioactive. Just that our is most available and also most dominant, it might be holding back the evolution of those other forms. And with nearly 10,000 planets already identified and more or less confirmed by various missions, this actually makes it a pretty rare object. Nevertheless, there are some exciting planets that have been discovered so far that do have a slight chance to be maybe habitable and even potentially somewhat Earth like when hosting liquid water on the surface. See as well. How wonderful were some new discoveries? And the first planet I wanted to take a look at was only found approximately a few days ago from when I'm making this video. Discovered by the TAS telescope and known as the planet Toy 1452b. Toy here stands for TAS Object of Interest. A planet that's very likely approximately 100 light years away from planet Earth and was actually missed by some of the earlier surveys because this planet is located in a binary star system and so some of the first observations did not actually recognize this to be a planet. And that's because normally in the binary system, as the two stars orbit around one another, they actually do produce quite a lot of dips. And these dips can kind of look like planets and can actually sometimes fool the scientists. And so in this case, the smaller dip around one of the stars was not seen right away. And in this case, these two stars also orbit around one another relatively closely, around 97 AU which means that telling anything apart here is kind of difficult. But following a thorough analysis, one of the teams from Montreal was able to identify another dip around one of these stars. A dip that was caused by some kind of a planet that's about 1.6 times the size of planet Earth, orbiting around the star every 11 days. And normally this would be a problem, but in this case because the star is a red dwarf, it actually places this particular planet right in the habitable zone of the star system. Which of course means that it has a very high chance to potentially have liquid water on the surface. But once again, because this is a binary, it actually is possible to use some of the variations in the orbits to then also determine the mass of this planet, which is what the scientists were able to do. In the process of discovering that this planet is maybe about 4.8 times as massive as planet Earth, which intriguingly gives this particular planet very similar density to the density of planet Earth, around 5.6 gram per centimeter cube. Earth is about 5.5, which actually implies several things. First of all, this is a relatively dense object and is a terrestrial object, not some kind of a gas giant or some kind of a gas planet. But because of its relatively high mass, it also has a very high chance to potentially contain a lot of lighter materials as opposed to metals or different types of silicates. In other words, it implies that this particular object has a very high chance to be some kind of an ocean world. So, kind of like one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, such as Ganymede right here that has a very large ocean underneath, with about 30% of everything here being water, except that in this case it's a much much bigger object. It's a planet that's even bigger than Earth. Ganymede or like Europa or other moons, because of its location around the star system, the ocean here would be liquid. Making this planet... We've actually talked about some of these objects in some of the previous videos. There should be one somewhere right there or in the description. But in a nutshell, this planet right now has the highest chance of having a really huge ocean on the surface. So potentially another interesting also include moons. Of telescope include moons. that can either confirm this or discover something else really intriguing in the process. Something we might learn about in the next Potential episode. moons as well. So planet number one. Then there's another planet that was recently found, I guess about a week ago, described in the paper that you can find in the description. This one is known as Ross 508. And once again, this is some kind of a super Earth. Essentially a planet that's bigger and more massive than Earth by just a little bit, but not enough to be a gas giant. And so this planet Ross 508b is actually much closer, about 37 light years away from us. But what makes this planet interesting is the fact that it seems to have a very unusual orbit, where it essentially enters and then exits the habitable zone of the star. Because of its unusually 
optical orbit, making this a super intriguing target to study the potential habitability of these types of worlds. In this case, during its winter time, it might actually have liquid water on the surface, but then during the shorter summer time, the water might actually evaporate or at least disappear in some parts of the planet. And once again, because the orbit here only takes approximately 11 days, and this is once again a red dwarf, this is still a very intriguing target in order to learn more about potentially habitable worlds outside of the solar system. And just like the previously discussed planet, this one is about four times as massive as planet Earth, and is also slightly larger in size as well. Although what makes this discovery kind of exciting compared to the previous one is the fact that this is the first time ever the scientists found this by using infrared instruments on top of the Subaru telescope. In other words, this is the first planet ever discovered entirely by using infrared instruments, which once again means that James Webb here is going to be able to see this planet so much better because it's the biggest and strongest infrared telescope we currently have. By using this technique, we can now enter planets, especially planets that are just too dim to be seen in optical light, but can still be detected using infrared, often the case around the red dwarfs. And the vast majority of similar terrestrial planets so far have actually only been discovered around the red dwarf stars, mostly because these stars right here are basically like 90% of all of the stars in the galaxy. They're extremely common. JTAC and Sun are not as common at all. But terrestrial planets have already been discovered around various red dwarfs, including the iconic Trappist-1 system, their photosynthesis to start creating oxygen and to potentially evolve more complex life. Or basically, like this picture indicates, is it possible for Earth-like conditions to exist elsewhere, around some kind of a red dwarf or some kind of a other type of a star? Well, in the last few years, there have been some really intriguing discoveries in regards to, well, essentially how photosynthesis works on the planet and it should be in a cell. how absolutely instrumental it has been to the evolution it of the planet. It depends on the, some of the different planets are in the description below. Uh, in the planet, on the lead. important discoveries is actually in regards to the mineral production on the planet. Over half of various minerals on Earth, the ones that are super important for life or for chemical reactions involving life, have actually been created because of life itself, specifically because of oxygenation and because of the oxygen produced by early bacteria. And because our plant. Case in point of uh, two fallacies that point out in the rare earth hypothesis, well, only two. One, how life or the life and earth was not made for life. Life was made for Earth, and two, Earth was made for life by life. So, Earth, life for any uh, planet is that starts out not have a life, but not a team of life. Eventually, like the life itself might start terraforming that planet, like it did as it did Earth. From starting to use whatever energy, whatever whatever materials available. Planet had oxygen for nearly three billion years, and all of this oxygen was able to produce a lot of these new minerals. All of this is super important for the evolution of more complex life. But the most effective way we know of to produce oxygen is through photosynthesis. What about lightning? Hey, in previous videos you said if we detect oxygen in the planet's atmosphere, that doesn't mean life, because we know other ways. Pick one, pick a lane. Photosynthesis exists even on planet Earth. Only the one involving chlorophyll seems to be the most efficient one. On it's Earth. One that really took off on our planet. Because of the and conditions. So can also happen on these other planets, including the ones discussed earlier. And there's at least one study that did a very good Sometimes my favorite lightning. Last year. The study that or electrolysis. Here the idea was really simple. Or thermal. The planet, no Some planets have more gravitational tugging, does more heat, gravitational friction. And more heat, and more volcanic vents. It's back to using thermal energy. Even nuclear radiation. See, there are mushrooms in Chernobyl living off the radiation. Say a planet absorbs more, uh, say, uranium. A planet is more radioactive, or something has more of that, or more radioactive, let's say, a potassium, or more, or more thermal. And might think. Earth is uninhabitable. Also, plants can be darker too, in different structures to catch more energy and light. This is a hypothetical structure of a leaf on our planet with a, on our dim star. See these branches? The white around them, that reflect light down to the plant cells and chloroplasts. Here's the view from the Earth's side. The sea is white to reflect light down. This also might work best on a tiny log planet around a dim star. Where no break, so it can use every minute. 
we're actually now a break there we thought it like no time where no sun available sunlight is always available so it can take its time so again a different it doesn't have to be our particular set of coincidences it could be a different set of coincidences an error fallacy and rare earth hypothesis what are your different set of coincidences I studied that source 442 d an exoplanet discovered back in 2015 and an exoplanet that's still believed to be most earth-like object with the highest chance for potentially habitable conditions approximately 1.3 masses of planet earth and about 1.3 times larger than earth but more importantly, a planet orbiting a star known as a K-type star. A type of a star that's a little bit hotter than a typical red dwarf, but not as hot and not as massive as our own sun. These are actually slightly more common as well. And these stars usually are able to live at least to calculate the amount of photosynthetically active radiation, PAR as it's also known. That depends on how much the cell can catch. Star. Because even if the star is really bright, but it's not able to produce just the right amount of light, for photosynthesis to actually t the chance for any complex that depends on the cell structure itself it would still be power that's also not as common as a red dwarf planets around red dwarfs which have roughly around a third of the temperature of the sun could not possibly produce enough energy to even activate photosynthesis wait before you before you're just uh, saying we should rule out red dwarf because they release too much radiation again pick a lane already have like opportunistic life that actually thrives on sh the stars outbursts stores all that extra energy because bacteria living underground with probes reaching the surface to catch any energy when it comes available and the right the dirt protects the main cell and dna Co you got creatures like cork with his body's made of rock to actually protect the organic cells beneath or that star trek yeah, again, even if you can't replace carbon with silicone, you can, that creature can incorporate more silicone or other materials to protect themselves from radiation, and you probably have to use it when it becomes available. In the study, they actually studied 10 potentially have the ones of planets known to us around different kinds of stars, and unfortunately failed to find a single match for Earth-like conditions or Earth-like atmosphere. What kind of atmosphere did they find? Hydrogen sulfide, which is produced by life? different atmospheres that are really produced by life. So early on planet Earth, we kind of expect to find it at least possibly somewhere. Some of the KTAP stars, including this planet, Kepler 442b, still have a chance to have maybe some photosynthesis on Earth. It might be possible for some of the life here to create photosynthesis using lens around 800 nanometers or infrared light, but at the moment we don't really know of any such organisms on planet Earth. Yes, we do. From the bottom of the ocean to from thermal bacteria, radioactive bacteria, and those mushrooms. I don't know if they use photosynthesis. They're mushrooms, they're protists. You know bacteria. Also, electrolysis. They're producing electric water, uh, free oxygen from water using electricity. 